On Nationwide this evening, our eyes and keeping them in focus. We hear about scientific advances which have Ireland at the cutting edge of developments worldwide and we ask the obvious questions about keeping our sight in top focus as we age. You're welcome to Nationwide. This evening we're looking at something that most of us take for granted, our eyesight. We're coming to you from Waterford City and I'm delighted to say that it is here at the Waterford Institute of Technology that some of the most advanced research in the world is taking place. This research, which will help people to avoid blindness, is part of a multi-million euro research project happening here in the southeast of Ireland and that can benefit people all around the globe who have issues with sight loss. This is Carrigan Orr House. It's part of the extended campus of WIT and inside a team of scientists have been working away over the years into groundbreaking research which has put Ireland to the fore of developments in research into sight loss. Now these are exciting times for the team here, for the WIT and for Ireland and later on we'll be going inside to have a look at the work that they do. First though, about five years ago we on Nationwide had a report into the early research which was taking place here at WIT and in that report Helen McInerney met some people who were in danger of going blind. For Nora Norton being able to drive is very important as she lives in rural County Cork. Nora has macular degeneration and she has come to Waterford to have her eyes tested. Three years ago out of, I thought out of the blue they all tell me that this is you know, progressive and it develops. But all of a sudden, any time I looked in a straight line, it looked wavy. You know, it was um, edgy, the white line in the middle of the road, <laughs> um, the frames around the pictures hanging up on my wall. Could be tricky if the white line so, looked wavy, couldn't well, yeah, it? Yeah. Now, where I was probably a bit lucky is that my left eye went very bad, but my right eye didn't. I do have it in my right eye, but it didn't go anywhere near as bad as my left eye. When Nora was diagnosed three years ago, she realised she would have to make certain changes. I thought, this is, well, this is it and kind of have to work my life around. Um, in a few years, I may not be able to drive, etc. Um, so I, as far as I knew from everything I'd researched, there really was nothing. Uh, there was some American research into implanting something at the back of your eye and putting a camera in a pair of heavy black glasses or something like that but nothing practical so um basically you know i was resigned to the fact this is the way it was going to be and it just got worse and worse and worse the initial prognosis was not positive but then she heard an interview on the radio i can't remember who it was or what program it was or anything but i heard somebody talking about um amd and um so i perked up and they were talking about this product and i found out a bit more about it and then i realized it'd been clinically trialed in waterford and i thought that's great so i rang waterford and i talked to a girl down there amd stands for age related macular degeneration and first you have to understand what the macula is the macula is the center of the back of your eye and with increasing age this degenerates and then it's a condition known as AMD or age-related macular degeneration. When you get AMD, you can see everything except for what you're looking at. So in other words, you can't read, you can't recognize faces, you can't watch television, and you can't drive. So you lose your independence, your independence, your social independence. Age-related macular degeneration, which refers to degeneration of the center of your retina, results in loss of central vision. This disease affects people aged 55 years of age or older and it is now the commonest cause of blind registration in the Western world and the number of people who suffer from it is going to double in the next 12 years and it's going to double in the next 12 years simply because we're living longer. The clinical trials that Nora heard about are being conducted by a research team at the Waterford Institute of Technology. Thanks to the funding that we've uh, achieved today through government funding from Enterprise Ireland, from the Health Research Board, also from the charities Fighting Blindness Ireland, local charity, the Waterford Aftalmic Research Fund, we have been able to grow as a research community, specialising in this area of macular pigment research. We are now considered um, world leaders in, in this area of research. 
Maca Shield is a commercially available food supplement which contains all three components of the macular pigment, the lutein, the zeaxanthin and the mesozeaxanthin. Maca Shield is a product from a company called Macavision Europe Limited. There's many companies that have different products. Um, Bosch and Lom have a product, Occuvite Lutein. What's interesting about Maca Shield is that it contains all three components and therefore this is the formulation that we tend to recommend to our patients. It's just over two years since Jimmy O'Hearn noticed his sight deteriorating. But when he visited his optician, he discovered a new pair of glasses would not solve the problem. He was referred to a consultant and the initial prognosis was not positive. He just came along and I tell you, it was like a train hit me and knocked me over. I got such... I couldn't believe it would happen to me, but it did. I was told that I'd be lose my eyes sight in three years and that's two years and two months gone and uh, down the road since then and when I got involved with Dr John Nolan here in Waterford Institution of Technology that uh, I got into him by accident and I started taking the macular shield and since then I, my eyesight is after stabilizing and just holding it did not go back since and uh, what I have and what I'm holding, you know, I feel very happy with that. That report was first broadcast in 2009 and aren't they wonderful stories of people whose sight was saved. A little later on in the programme we'll be meeting some of them to see how they are today. And since that broadcast, well, the work has continued and the number of scientists has increased. And we all know that research like that costs an awful lot of money. Now, the funding comes from many sources, but one man who has been to the fore in his financial commitment to the project is Dr. Alan Howard, who made millions from a diet he developed that we all know as the Cambridge diet. Dr. Howard has a huge interest in macular pigment and he has donated large sums of money to the work being carried out here at the Vision Research Centre in Waterford. And recently we met up with Dr Howard and his fellow scientists in Cambridge. The Howard Foundation in Cambridge was set up by Dr Alan Howard following the success of the Cambridge Diet. It's a charitable trust that provides funds for biomedical research. I spent over 60 years in Cambridge doing medical research. I was fortunate enough to work with a colleague at the West Middlesex Hospital in London to develop the Cambridge diet. Now I realised that of course that a lot of money would be generated from the sales of the diet and the intellectual property was therefore invested in a new foundation called the Howard Foundation. During my lifetime I was very much interested in uh, diet and coronary heart disease. And um, in Belfast, there's a very high rate of coronary heart disease compared with Toulouse in France. And we decided to investigate the diet and the blood levels of antioxidants in the two groups of people. And we came up with a very surprising result that in fact in France, they have twice the level of a substance called lutein in the blood than in Belfast. This created a great deal of interest because I thought that maybe there was a causal relationship and lutein, as you know, is in fact uh, the, one of the macular pigments in the macula in the eye, which we are now c currently working on. I've invested in the research in Waterford because I'm very much interested in research on macular pigment. And Waterford Group was in fact the only one I could come across where it was their main theme of research and where I could get clinical material. And it was very important for me at that stage, having developed a product containing mesozeaxanthin, to have clinical material where we could work with people with age-related macular degeneration. I must say that we've been working over the last six years. It has been a tremendous success, both for us and also for them, because we've supplied them with all the money they required for research. And they've uh, gone ahead and produced an enorm enormous amount of results. Emeritus Professor at the University of Ulster, David Thurnham is a consultant to the Howard Foundation. He was first introduced to the work being carried out in Waterford by John Nolan at a meeting in Belfast. We've had a very good collaboration with the people in Waterford 
because I, I retired from the University of Ulster, so I was no longer able to do um, biochemical analysis, but I was able to assist them in setting up the methods and uh, generally helping out and advising the Howard Foundation. Dr. Mark Kirby is scientific advisor with MacuVision Europe in England. In 2007, he had just graduated from University College Cork with a science degree, specialising in nutrition, when he was chosen by the Vision Research Centre in Waterford to join the group. I spent about four years working with them, looking at various factors which influence the amount of macular pigment which an individual will have. We know that macular pigment is dietary in origin, um, but we also know that other quite common factors, um, negative factors if you want in society such as obesity, very common, and smoking which is also very common, these factors will lead to an individual having a decreased macular pigment and um, less macular pigment than they ideally should have for optimal vision. So, as we saw there, good nutrition is very important when it comes to preserving our eyesight. Back here in Waterford, and we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll be meeting some of the people who were in danger of losing their sight a few years ago, and also, we'll be finding out more about the work that goes on here at the Vision Research Centre. We'll talk to you again in a couple of minutes. <laughs>